The third most common reason people become a vegan or vegetarian is social responsibility. Um, and this actually applies to flexitarians quite a bit. People care about where their food comes from. They're starting to wonder, are we supporting big business or small farms? And how do my choices affect the global environment that I live in? So social responsibility is a, another big reason for becoming a vegan or vegetarian. And so we're going to just co cover some of those right now. Uh, one of those is, of course, economics. Economics of feeding 6 billion people on our planet. It is a lot easier to feed people if you're doing it vegan than if you're feeding them with animal products. Uh, harvesting and raising animals requires a lot of resources and it takes a lot more of our planet to do that. We're, we're mowing down rainforests in order to feed enough cattle. We're, we're, you know, we're invading in the habitat of wild animals in, in, in wildlife preserves because you know, we, just, we need more ground, more ground, more ground to feed the cows when we could have eaten what we've given the cows and it gone a lot further. For example, it takes up to 16 pounds of soybeans and other grains to make one pound of beef. So you can imagine, you've got, to, already, you've got to make that product, the soybeans, then you've got to feed it to the cow. By eating grain foods directly, we can make our food supply far more uh, economically viable. Second one is large industrial operations versus real farming. Uh, this is great even for the flexitarian. Are you supporting families who are enjoying farming and creating a wholesome environment for their whole family, their children, their lifestyle is, is conducive to being in a farm? Or are you supporting these large industrial corporations that are just mass producing food and, and and destroying the soils and the environment around them as they're doing this. In the industrial operations, they just automate tons and tons of this stuff. And less and less people are employed. You're, you're not helping to feed as many families. You're, you're not stimulating the economy the same as with multiple farms. Of course, there's water usage and, and water loss. It takes 3 to 15 times more water to create animal products as it does to create vegetarian and vegan products. So when you become a vegan or vegetarian, you're actually increasing water conservation. Work conditions of humans in the meat industry. You've probably seen videos of the horrible conditions that animals have to live in in, in terms of the, the animal industry. but. Did you consider the human portion as well? There are people who have to work in those same conditions, in the filth and the, the disease that's being spread in some of this fecal matter, the, the overseas meat production and, and what that does to affect the human uh, social structure around these places. You know, we burn down the rainforest, they're pushing out a lot of the indigenous people. There's even been murders just to increase land. Uh, and many missionaries can attest to how horrific that can be. So even if you're not really worried about animals, perhaps that's why you're more of a flexitarian. Perhaps you think, well, we're, you know, humans are sentient beings and animals are sort of lower in the scale of uh, the food chain. Uh, consider the, the human welfare the portion of the meat industry. The fourth reason to become a vegan, vegetarian, or flexitarian is for environmental concerns. Whether it's deforestation, soil, co soil conservation, the effect the fossil fuel burning is having on the greenhouse effect, or even uh, uh, the toxins that are used in agriculture. These are all important reasons uh, to be more aware of where your food is coming from. And of course, that doesn't, you, I mean, you could be a vegan and vegetarian technically and not affect changing these areas by just buying, you know, junk food that wasn't, didn't have animal products in it. So of course, we're talking a little bit more beyond just uh, avoiding meat and avoiding animal products at this point. We're talking about being aware of where they come from, how they're grown, transportation of that food. All those factors play an important part in this motivation for becoming a vegan, vegetarian, or flexitarian. I mentioned a little bit earlier about deforestation. Um, we, we see that the damage that causes on a global scale as far as uh, global warming. Um, and I know that there are some scientists saying that that's a myth, but for the most part, most scientists agree that global warming is increasing. We're seeing melting of the polar caps in far greater proportion than, than any in the last 100 years. Or, and even before that, they're able to map, of course, the trajectory within the ice and uh, within, within our um, 
current understanding, there's never been a cyclic period where we've had this much melting in the polar caps. It's just been so extreme and there's actually entire documentaries uh, based on this particular, just this one aspect of global warming, which is the polar ice caps, and, and what that's going to do as far as, uh, you know, change the salinity of the, um, the oceans. So deforestation has a huge impact on, on greenhouse effect because, of course, you're taking away all the, the oxygen that the trees are giving, but it also causes a lot of other problems. Uh, and, and I mentioned earlier before in social responsibility how when they mow down a set of trees in a tropical area, they're not just mowing down trees, they're taking away habitat for animals and they're taking habitat away from human beings. Uh, whole cultures that live in the jungle are being forced out, they're being destroyed, murdered, killed, uh, forced to become something they, they, they don't even understand because of the greed of the companies motivating uh, the deforestation so they can get more land for cattle and 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 quicker crops and and it's not just animals uh, it is true like for palm trees uh, for palm oil and things like that deforestation does come into play for other things other than animal products I want to be clear so choices we do need to consider our choices very carefully what we're buying and why why we need that item do we need it for our nutrition do we need it because we would like it where is it coming from how is it obtained can I buy it locally uh, can I grow it myself and, and help change within my own environment? You know, creating, creating the uh, gar community gardens are wonderful opportunity because you're not only affecting social responsibility with community gardens, you're also helping with environmental concerns. And it doesn't seem like that at first, some little garden in some city plot, but plants filter toxins out of the air. They, they, they get rid of carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, a lot of other toxins and poisons. So just having plants sprinkled throughout cities uh, it, it increases tremendously uh, the, avail the reduction of pollution within that city. And of course one little guard is not going to do it, but every choice we make, one choice each human being makes, makes a difference. So conservation of fossil fuels. Uh, how, how does that affect being vegan or vegetarian or meat eating? Well, let's have a look at it. It takes 78 calories of fossil fuel to produce one calorie of beef protein. Now, a calorie is a measurement of energy or heat. It takes 35 calories for one calorie of pork, 22 calories for one of poultry, but just one calorie of fossil fuel for one calorie of soybeans. So by eating plant foods instead of animal foods, we are creating a huge reduction in the use of fossil fuels in the agriculture industry. I mean, 78 calories to one calorie of beef, it, that's incredible. When you could have one calorie of fossil fuel for one calorie of a plant food, it just, it, it makes so much economic sense. It makes, it makes environmental sense and global sense. Plus, it's healthier for you and you're going to live longer for that, for that eating that food. And of course, there are lots of other environmental concerns. Just one is toxins used in agriculture and, uh, and, and other issues like that. Of course, that can be used again in producing plant proteins. We, we know that. We've seen the GMO issues with soy and corn and, and some of the uh, detrimental effects of that. So again, this is not just animal versus plant, but also an awareness of where your food is coming from. So are other related issues uh, as far as why we want, might want to choose becoming a vegan, vegetarian, or flexitarian. And just a few of those we're going to touch on uh, include our economic vote, natural diet, and even world peace. So your economic vote. We all know money talks. When you purchase animal products, you show support of the meat industry and the way it operates. And the, the capitalistic corporations, they're not going to change unless their bottom line changes. So whenever you're making a purchase, you're supporting. And whenever you don't purchase, uh, you, you, you express by that economic vote that you are not happy with their industry. Our body is closer to a herbivore than a carnivore. And while it's true we have some omnivore tendencies as far as our teeth, um, most of our body, our hands, we're not designed to 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 kill anything with our hands. Uh, our teeth aren't designed to rip open thick skin. We are designed as an herbivore. 
You know, there can never be peace among men while men keep declaring war on other highly developed life forms. We, we've seen this in the dolphin industry. They, they are self-aware. They can look in the mirror and they know that's them. And to not change the way we fish to protect the dolphins or just stop eating fish and not worry about that whole aspect of, of what we're doing to the oceans in terms of, of the dolphins. So, I mean, that's just one, one example. Without an ultimate respect for all life, we just are not going to have the peace that we all keep expressing that we want between each other. Uh, there has to be that respect for even even just being alive, let alone getting along. And, and if we can't do that in, in, in terms of how we interact with animals, it's not going to happen interacting between humans. So it's up to you to, to go back through this lesson and to just you know, internalize what is your personal motivations and reasons for making these changes uh, and then move on to lesson, the next lesson.